This video is about oxidation states, and it's one of two videos. The second one will be talking about how to balance redox reactions using the half reaction method. And this one we just talk about the basic rules and what oxidation numbers are. If you may remember, you may remember from last year that oxidation numbers uh, indicate the general distribution of electrons. So usually those electrons are in some sort of a bond. If an element is all by itself in its elemental state, the distribution is zero. So if we look at a periodic table, I want you to notice that oxidation numbers are actually quite similar to ionic charges. So if you have an element that's in group one, such as lithium, when it bonds to something, it's going to have a plus one oxidation state. So if you had lithium bonded to chlorine, the chlorine being more electronegative, the lithium being having a partial positive and a partial negative on the chlorine, the electrons are going to want to go towards the chlorine. Well, it only has one electron that it passes to chlorine, which means that it's a plus one, since the electron has left the lithium, making it more positive, has gone to the chlorine, which now has a negative one, so its oxidation state is negative one. You'll notice that, of course, being the halogen that it is, there's that negative one. Lithium, being in the alkali metals, is going to be a plus one. So the oxidation num number could be the same for all of them. So for example, all the alkali metals pretty much just give up one electron, which means they're all going to have a plus one oxidation state when they bond. When they bond, that's the key. If it's by itself, that Li, if it was just in its solid state all by itself, then its oxidation state is zero because it's not bonding to anything. The same thing would apply, let's say that you had oxygen, so the oxygen would be over here. If you had oxygen, and it's double bonded to itself, but the thing is it's double bonded um, to itself. It's not going to give up electrons. It's an equal bond, so there is no pulling on it to one side more or the other. So the oxidation states are zero for oxygen, and when it's an elemental state, just like when it's bonded to itself, it's still going to be zero. Okay. So now, let's look at some other compounds. Let's open that up here. Bring this down. Open this up. Okay. You're going to see that you have a compound. This is magnesium dioxide. And that the oxygen, oxygens almost always have a negative 2 charge. So the mag manganese is bonded to one oxygen and bonded to the other oxygen. And in this case, it's actually double bonded, okay? Which means that the oxygen is more electronegative, so it's going to pull electrons towards it. It's going to pull two electrons towards it, giving it a negative two charge, negative two charge on both sides. And because four electrons went away, it's going to have a partial positive, but it's going to be a plus four on the manganese. So, when all is said and done, the overall molecule's charge has to be zero. So, if we write here MnO2, you have a plus four on the manganese. You have two oxygens that each have a negative two. So, the overall negative is plus four, or I'm sorry, is a negative four. Manganese overall is a plus four, so overall it gives it a zero. So when it's a, a molecule, it's neutral, it has a zero overall charge, which means that the two oxidation states have to cancel out. But you'll notice that this permanganate has a negative one, which means when you add up all the negative twos from the oxygen, you get negative eight. Manganese has to be plus seven to, because it has to equal the charge on the polyatomic ion. Um, at this point, when we get to class, we'll go through a lot more practices. Also, on the quiz, take the quiz after the video. There'll be the two videos. Take the quiz, and it should give you a better idea of how you would assign oxidation states to the numbers. Thank you.